Valeria Shalnova, a 21-year-old resident of Aktau, is known for her many victories in hand-to-hand -hand combat competitions. The girl was doing well. She was studying, working, and making plans for the future. But she didn't even realize what a trap she had fallen into. Nor did her family. On July 2, 2023, at about 8 a call was received on the duty officer's remote control 102 that in Aktau on the water intake canal, near the bridge, at the bottom of the sea, there was a corpse of a man lying on the bottom of the sea. The body was found by a local fisherman. He filmed everything on video. On the shore were neatly stacked things. Near stood a bag, but there was no phone. An investigative and operational team went to the call. The body of 21-year-old Valeri was found without signs of violent death. So reported the law enforcement authorities. And a criminal case was opened under Article 105, driving to suicide. That is, the girl took her own life. But the relatives of the deceased did not agree with the conclusions of law enforcers. They were sure that the girl had been killed. And there were reasons for this, such as the testimony of the fisherman, who told the relatives that the girl had obvious signs of strangulation on her neck, that she was covered with bruises. Also, the sister of the deceased reported that they personally saw that her nose was crushed, numerous hematomas on her body, a hematoma on her head, that there were signs of strangulation on her neck. Why did the medical examiner give information to the police that there were no signs of violent death on the body? Did they want to keep the case quiet? But publicity prevented them from doing so. After all, soon the case was reclassified as a murder. The police recognized the murder of the athlete only after the intervention of the prosecutor's office and thanks to the public outcry. So also appeared the alleged suspect, Valeria's ex-boyfriend Nazim. And then it becomes clear why they wanted to keep the case as a suicide. According to the sister of the deceased, Valeria Shalnova, the medical forensic expert who examined the body is an interested party, a good acquaintance of the murder suspect. Therefore, despite the obvious signs of violent death, the autopsy was conducted not on the first day, but on the second. He deliberately postponed the autopsy to the next day, and on the first day, he did not let anyone in to identify her. From here, on the first day, they rushed to give information that no traces of violent death were found on the body, says Karolina Shalnova. Also, this expert offered financial assistance to the father of the deceased on the day they went to the funeral home, says Karolina Shalnova. After refusing, he said, well, what are you saying no to? We have a recording of this conversation and this expert, Eldar, began to press the need for a speedy burial, saying that the body would come to an unsightly state. He knew that we would find out anyway and demand an independent examination, says Karolina Shalnova. These accusations were commented on by the Institute of Forensic Expertise of Mangustau region. The information circulating that the autopsy was carried out by a forensic expert named Eldar is untrue, we do not have such forensic experts. As for the suspension of the forensic expert, this decision is made by the criminal prosecution bodies. Also, in social networks, there is information that the histologist is on vacation. This is also untrue. According to the current legislation, the period of body examination can last up to 30 days. We have appointed a commission. Experts from Aktob region will be invited. We suggested to the lawyer of the injured party to involve their representative. As a rule, it can be a doctor who will be present during the autopsy and selection of materials. The injured party has such a right, but the decision, again, is made by the criminal prosecution bodies, commented in the Institute of Forensic Expertise of Mangustau region. And so, we've dealt with it. The family of the deceased got a criminal case under the article of murder. Let's see why Valerie Nazim's boyfriend turned out to be a suspect. From the first days when they found the body of Lara, relatives suspected her boyfriend with whom she was in a relationship for more than two years. The fact that the couple broke up a few months before the tragedy. And all these months Nazim stalked her, 
and later it turned out that he was still manhandling. Also at the scene of the incident was not found Lara's cell phone, it was at the same Nazim. And then the puzzle was put together that Nazim was involved in this tragedy. The fact that on July 2nd, allegedly, Valeria sent a suicide message to her sister and mother. It surprised the relatives that they wrote only to her sister and mother. With a cousin, she corresponds every day, but she did not send anything. Also, according to the results of the autopsy, death occurred at 5 Ozoord in the morning, and the messages were sent at 06 Ozoord. Nazim himself says he brought her to the place where the body was found. They had a fight. He took the phone and left her, and then came back and could not find her. That's how he became a suspect. What happened on the night from the first to the second, and the following happened. Shocking details were told by Lara's sister. Valeria's sister, Caroline, spoke in detail about what exactly proves the guilt of the convict so that not only the investigation, but also the public was aware of the evidence base. My sister broke up with the defendant three months before the crime. They had previously dated for several years. Our family did not know about the beatings and everything else. It became known only after everything happened. My sister was an athlete, and if there were any bruises on her body, it was all written off as training. No one was suspicious. Plus. Nazim always behaved like a fluffy dandelion in public. All in all, he seemed harmless. That day, when all this happened, he came to our house in the sixth neighborhood and tried to make up with her. She sent him away and then went to work at a cafe. At 1.30, she left the cafe, the security cameras recorded. Before that, he called her and said, okay, let's not fight there. I'll give you a car and you can go for a drive with the girls. She liked to drive, so she apparently agreed to take the car, said the sister of the deceased. The fact that Valeria planned to meet with her friends, they themselves confirm. That evening, she wrote to them that her ex would give them a car and they could go for a drive with the girls. The girls had already gathered and were waiting for Valera to call her and tell her where to come. It turns out that she leaves the cafe where she worked, gets into the car with him, and they drive without stopping towards the canal. This is all confirmed by cell phone billing, the fact that from the cafe and to the canal, they drove without stopping, and their phones were together the whole time. After they reached Shora, they stopped there for 20 minutes. After that, Nazim's car drove towards the Mike Vodokanal at a tremendous speed. He got there literally in a few minutes, you know, uh, at what speed he drove there. After that, he stayed there for a while and went to the city bypass, started to create an alibi for himself, says the girl. At that time, the convict called the very same girlfriends and asked them, where is Valeria? He said he couldn't find her anywhere. In fact, what happened? In those 20 minutes when he stopped closer to Shora, what happened there was that he apparently stunned her as she did not resist, raped her, then drove towards Make, strangled her to the end, and threw her body into the water with the hope that the body would be carried away to the water channel and no one would find it there. But by the law of meanness, the body was close to the shore where there was no current, which is why the body was not carried away. After that, Nazim took my sister's cell phone and drove along the bypass, creating an alibi for himself in the city. At about 6 a.m., suicide messages were sent to me and my mother from her phone. At that time, he was standing in the sixth neighborhood, actually near our house, and sent them to us. The investigation figured it out. A few days later, they found the phone on the defendant's person, and then I made a fuss, and he was detained, Carolina said. In the Telegram channel, Valeria Shalnova, her sister tells about all the nuances of the case including the version of the convict himself. For so long, he refused to testify. He only testified at the final session, and he was talking such nonsense. He couldn't have come up with something more believable. According to the killer's version, he met my sister from work, and they decided to go for a drive. When it wasn't rape, he didn't say anything about them being intimate. Then he says they drove out, drove into the 13th neighborhood, and had intercourse there. 
although, according to the billing records, he didn't go to the 13th neighborhood. They drove on to the canal, where my sister said she wanted to go out to pee and was embarrassed by him, so she went under the bridge. Under the bridge? Not under the pipe where the body was found, but under the bridge. Also inconsistent. She'd been gone a long time. I went down to look, and she'd undressed and said she wanted to go swimming. Then they had a fight. He got angry, shook her by the shoulders. She jumped into the water, went swimming. He wasn't afraid she would drown as he knew his sister could swim. And he took the phone and left. And then, when he woke up, he came back, and she was not there. This is his version, said Caroline. Her sister and relatives had no doubts that it was the girl's ex-boyfriend who caused her death from the first day. Later, the investigation was convinced of this version, and then the Interdistrict Criminal Court of Mangistau region, which sentenced the man to 22 years of imprisonment in a strict regime colony. Nevertheless, the defense and the convict himself continue to insist on innocence, and an appeal hearing will be held in the near future. Why was I sure from the beginning that it was him? When I received these strange messages, we're talking about posthumous texts that were sent, presumably by the killer after her death, I called, you'd be surprised. But it was Nazim, because he never left her for a second. He had her on 24-7 watch, he monitored her emails, he had all the passwords to her accounts, which he hacked, and he confirms it himself. I have a voicemail where he says to me, Caroline, yes, I'm reading all her correspondences. I called him and said, where is Valera? Addressed to Valeria Shalnova by relatives, author's note. To which he replied, I don't know. I was looking for her myself all night. I told him to get up and go look for her further in case something happened, something suspicious. He agreed, said he would go. Two hours go by, I dial him again, I ask him if he found it, and he says, I fell asleep. Here, tell me, what loving guy who begs forgiveness, who has always been in control when his girlfriend is missing, will go and go to bed quietly? Only the one who knows she's gone, Caroline said. The girl says that when she learned that Valeria was found dead at the water channel, she again contacted the defendant and told him the unfortunate news. In response, the convict recorded a tearful voice message. I have a recorded message where he cries and says that he persuaded her to be more careful and is very sorry. And then girls I know forward me a voicemail from him where he says, yes, I know, and that she was drinking all the time. She liked to sit on the rocks, so she died. These are the words of a loving man who was very worried about his girlfriend, says Carolina. Also, according to the sister of the deceased, audio recordings of the defendant's telephone conversations in the pre-trial detention center. While he was under investigation were made public. In them, according to Carolina, Hippersudi's acquaintances to come and testify about what a decent and wonderful person the defendant is, and at the same time, to defame Valeria's reputation. Only after the death of the girl, her relatives discovered the terrible truth about what the relationship between Valeria and the defendant really was. Ironically, while the hacker from the investigation team was trying to open some moments in the phone, I wasted no time and got into her laptop. The password to the mail picked up absolutely randomly. It was the same as mine. When I opened her VK, I saw that all correspondence is cleaned. That is, the account of the defendant at that moment was online. His guys were sitting there and clearing out all the correspondence because he was in the pretrial detention center at that moment and he was logging in from his computer. He couldn't do it himself. I started looking and there was practically nothing. Everything was deleted, but my sister, she was 10 teams smarter than the defendant. She was gathering dirt on him because she had previously contacted the police about him stalking her, but they did nothing. Apparently, she was going to file against him again with more evidence that he was stalking her, beating her and so on. And I found a hidden folder on V-Contact with all the saved correspondence, audio recordings, 
videos saying that he was beating her, strangling her and all that kind of stuff. It said that he was chastising her, accusing her all the time of cheating on him, reading her correspondence. Everything was recorded. There were recorded beatings, where she had a black eye, pictures she sent to her friends. There were descriptions of an incident where he got drunk on New Year's Eve and choked her so hard he almost killed her. Now, these choking moments were, I gather, frequent. Subsequently, on the day of the murder, he also strangled her. I also got voice recordings of police in action. As they say, no body, no case, Caroline said. Long eight months of investigation and trials ended with a guilty verdict. According to the victim's lawyer and her relatives, the judge sentenced the defendant to 22 years imprisonment in a strict regime colony. The accused, according to the relatives of Valeria, did not recognize his guilt. And note that the relatives of the deceased when accused, the investigators of bias. In the police of the region, until the last time it was not recognized. But soon it became known. By decision of the disciplinary commission, two employees who investigated the death of the athlete were relieved of their posts. Support the video with a like and the channel with a subscription. And all the best to you, be careful.